Anchor handling tugs, AHTSs, have been around for many years. These vessels play a crucial part when it comes to oil drilling, but they can do so much more than that. They're powerful vessels accommodating up to 100 people working in the middle of the sea under all sorts of conditions. Anchor handling tug supply vessels are very powerful ships that deploy, recover, and shift a subsea mooring pattern. These vessels are normally seen working with offshore installations. They're mainly built to handle anchors for oil rigs, tow them to location, and use them to secure the rigs in place. Oil rigs are generally located in the middle of the ocean or on the high seas, and the AHTS vessel's main task is to tug or tow an oil rig or a ship. This offshore vessel is specifically designed to provide anchor handling services and tow offshore platforms, barges, and production modules. They're also often used as standby rescue vessels for oil fields in production. These vessels supply tugs and anchors to oil rigs and cargo-carrying barges. Technically, an AHTS is a very large naval vessel, mainly because of the equipment it carries. Since these vessels provide a multi-utility facility, their demand has been increasing over the years as oil drilling from the oceanic area has increased. These vessels have been an intrinsic part of the oil drilling industry from the time drilling oil from oceans as an option was identified. They're designed with high horsepower to tow drilling units, perform anchor handling operations, and carry supplies to platforms. Many of these vessels are designed to meet the harsh conditions of the North Sea and can undertake supply duties between land bases and drilling sites. Working on such a vessel isn't easy. It requires long hours and much precision. The newer anchor handling tugs are built to survive the toughest conditions of the sea. They are the superior choice for subsea mooring operations in offshore oil and gas fields. All AHTS have things in common and have a range of work processes in specific areas. They're fitted with multiple thrusters, providing tremendous vessel handling features that allow such vessels to work in any sea condition. These vessels have crane-like equipment, known as a winch, that can be attached to the oil rig and then propelled forth in the water. The anchor supply can then be sunk into the seawater to keep the rig steady. The people working on these vessels are faced with some of the worst sea conditions. They often work in very rough seas, sometimes during rainstorms. The work doesn't stop, but these people are all trained to smash that like button just like you should be doing right now. But no, they're trained to do their job to avoid mistakes. Working on rough seas while operating with heavy equipment can be a challenge, but for those used to working on such vessels, it's just another day at work. They're in charge of everything from handling the anchor to the cranes and handling the vessel. They have some of the toughest jobs in the world. One of the hardest parts of working on an anchor handling tug is the actual anchor handling. The vessel needs to sail to the drop anchor point and then slowly pay out the mooring line to drop the anchor into the target box. The target box is a small area around the target point where anchors are installed. When the AHTS reaches the desired drop point, it deplores the mooring line along with the designated corridor. This is a challenging task, as the anchor and the anchor chain are extremely heavy, and working with them requires a tactical approach and precision. The crew on board is also responsible for the cleaning and maintenance of the chain and the anchor. With normal anchor handling, the idea is that a rig or barge has several anchors racked on board, and these anchors are transferred into one or more tugboats. While the anchor wire is connected to the fair lead winch of the rig, the tugboat moves to the anchor drop location, where it will be dropped upon arrival. In this situation, the anchors have already been dropped, but neither the rig nor the tugboat is connected to them. A wire attached to the anchor has a surface buoy at the other end, and the tugboat will pick up this buoy and connect its working wire to the anchor wire. Then the anchor wire will be attached to the ring chain wire. The outcome of such an operation will be identical to that of a standard anchor handling once it's completed. After the operation is completed, the buoy and the anchor are both loaded back onto the vessel. This requires special equipment that can pull the heavy chain and anchor from the ocean. After the ocean and anchor have been pulled, crew members check the anchor system for any damage. Where possible, any damage is fixed on the spot. The anchor is then rinsed with water to prevent any corrosion from occurring. Currently, there are a lot of different models of anchor handling tugs in the world, and one has managed to stand out and prove its power. That vessel is the Island Victory. Kongsberg Maritime created the Multipurpose Island Victory, which is owned by Islands Offshore, a company that operates cutting-edge offshore service ships. 
It is a stunning combination of cutting edge maritime engineering and enormous power and is categorized as a special purpose ship. It was constructed in 2020 and is currently operating under the Norwegian flag while carrying out a variety of tasks, including deep sea installation work and heavy anchor handling activities. This anchor handling tug measures 403 feet in length, 82 feet in width, and 30 feet in draft. It includes a cargo deck that is 12,916 square feet in size, seven ring chain lockers, and a moon pool that can hold 800 tons. Due to the two potent Rolls-Royce engines, the service vessel has a maximum capacity of 110 people and a bollard pole of 492 tons. Some of the most impressive amenities on board the most powerful tugboat in the world are the AHC crane, the deck crane, and the two rail cranes. All these features make the vessel suitable for pre-lay of anchor systems, installation of subsea equipment on the seabed, maintenance of oil wells, regular anchor handling, and the installation of offshore windmills. Island Victory is also certified to smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. But no, in all seriousness, it's certified to carry out oil recovery operations on the Norwegian continental shelf. As such, the vessel has been fitted with a storage tank that can hold up to 88,286 cubic feet of recovered oil. So far, the Island Victory has proven its power multiple times, and we believe that it will continue to be the most powerful AHTS in the world. But many other AHTS in the world are worth mentioning, although they don't compare to the Island Victory. One such vessel is the KL Sandefjord, which is owned by K-Line Offshore. It is a multifunctional vessel designed to carry out seabed operations. It has a bollard pole of 390 tons, and before the Island Victory appeared, the KL Sandefjord was considered the strongest AHTS vessel ever made. The ship was delivered in 2011 after it had completed sea trials. It's one of the first two AHTS vessels of this design, measuring 311 feet in length, 78 feet in width, and 30 feet in depth. The vessel is fitted with an ROV hangar and systems for underwater search operations and handling of anchors. The two cargo rail cranes are equipped with manipulators for safe operations of the working area on the deck. The multi-purpose vessel can easily engage in underwater seabed operations and deep water trenching. Its hull was designed in Romania and was towed to the shipyard for outfitting work. After the vessel was finished, it could accommodate 70 people in its 45 cabins. These vessels often carry a lot of crew members on board, so for them to be able to work constantly and effectively, they have to have the right living conditions. Although the KL Sandefjord isn't the strongest AHTS in the world, we believe it deserves a respectful place among the top five best AHTS in the world. Some of the other anchor handling tugs worth mentioning are the Far Samson, which currently holds the title as the second most powerful AHTS, the Boca Falcon, and the Scandia Guacu. These vessels have the same tasks to fulfill and are some of the most incredible anchor handling vessels we have seen in a while. Bye for now.